Today I complete the last portion of my solar setup and that is to hook this cable which runs from the DC to DC charger side of my Renogy MPPT charge controller. This runs up to a 50 amp circuit breaker up behind the driver's seat and from there it's going to go into the engine compartment. And right behind the driver's seat is where I located that 50 amp breaker. And you can see that's the other end of that 4 gauge cable that runs from the DC to DC charger to this point. And today the last two components of that solar installation and the DC to DC uh, charging portion just arrived. And from Spartan Power I got these on Amazon. I ordered up the length of 4 gauge cable that um, I needed. They also install the size of the lugs that you need. This will run from that 50 amp circuit breaker through the engine compartment and it will hook directly to my battery. Now the battery is a side mount which is typical on uh, Chevy vehicles and I needed to have some way to hook the end of this cable onto the battery so that's where these lugs come in these are made out of brass this will screw through the existing battery terminal but it will give me a stud in which to hook the other end of this cable up to it that will complete the uh, the electrical connections and hopefully if everything is working correctly while i'm driving this will throw a charge into my uh, my solar batteries and vice versa, it will also allow the DC to DC charger to throw a little bit of a charge from the solar into my starting battery. And the 4 gauge wire attaches to the 50 amp circuit breaker behind the driver's seat. It runs under the trim and through a pass through bushing in the firewall on the driver's side. It runs it through the engine compartment. You can see I've got a zip tied and I have some wire loom that I ran the wire through to protect it and keep it secure. I've got it labeled so that anybody not familiar with my system uh, will at least get some notice as to where the cables go to or where they're from. Attaches to my starting battery and the accessory stud that I received along with the order of the 4 gauge cable allows me to hook up the original uh, battery cable and then it gave me a stud that I could attach the DC to DC charger uh, wire to. If you're not familiar with these accessory studs this is all they are. One end will pass through your um, stock battery cable and into the battery itself making the same connection as before and it gives you a threaded end on the other end so that you can attach your accessory. In my case, that's where that 4 gauge cable attached to on the DC to DC charging portion of my solar system. And then obviously you would just put the nut on over the terminal. I like how the cabinet turned out up here on the top. My uh, pantry is gonna work good for holding my dry goods and my canned goods. I just, like I said, still have to put a door on the front. But I'm also making changes to the cabinet down below. And I think it's time to get cutting some more of this wood. And I've got my markings all laid out on the wood. And it's time to get cutting and installing. Now the only thing I need to do is to place a door on the upper pantry. And down below I made some changes as well. I removed those ledgers that I put in because I was going to put slides and have drawers but I decided I'm probably just going to store pots and pans there so I took the um, the ledgers out put in the same shelf support pins that I did up above and uh, then I moved on over to start on this area as you can see I've made a template to get it as close as I can so I can make a cabinet right there and that cabinet will extend over here to the uh, two side doors where I can place a sink. And then I can go from the uh, back side of this over toward the back doors and make an upper cabinet as well. 
I just cut and placed this uh, new vertical upright in place for my new cabinet. And uh, I was checking for squareness and I can certainly live with that. And here's how this fit in over the wheel well. And up the wall again using just my cardboard template that I made. The shelves in my pantry are nice and smooth and that's great for one thing uh, but the other thing is it also makes them very slippery which means you know putting canned goods that type of thing in on the shelves in that pantry are going to slide all around and bang around. What I decided to do was to buy a roll of this drawer liner from Harbor Freight. It's usually used for lining the drawers of toolboxes and I'm going to take a can of spray adhesive and I'm going to spray the shelves, apply the drawer liner and uh, then trim off the excess and that should help keep whatever I put on there in place. Okay, now they're coated with the cement and the liner and I just cut them apart. Well, those came out pretty good and I think that anything I put on them is going to stay in place and not slide all around. That uh, spray adhesive worked out great. Um, I just put one coat on which just makes the um, the matting tacky. Uh, but if you coat the back of the, uh, the shelf liner there and then also spray the wood and then put them together, that'll form a, a permanent bond. But you know the way it is, you may have to you know replace it at some point so I want to be able to take it off. But it came out pretty good I think. The second side of my uh, larger cabinet by the side doors has been installed. I just squared everything up and uh, measured out for the shelves and once I get the shelves cut, the only thing that will be left to do to that is to hang a door as well. Lots of extra storage. I just got the uh, left upright of my cabinet installed by the side doors. And now I guess I'm all set to install shelves here and then a door. And then maybe I can finish some of the, uh, the final trim on everything. My son and his girlfriend got me some awesome gifts for my birthday back in June. One of which was a switch panel. And I've kept it in the box just waiting for a chance to get this mounted. And I've got a couple shelves all ready to be cut and go into this new cabinet i just got this side finished and what do you think i think that that's going to be an excellent spot to mount this switch panel underneath here from here probably out here into the uh the side door area i'm going to build another cabinet and that's where my sink's going to go it's a really nice compact setup I love the fact that everything is fused. You can't have enough fuses to protect all your circuits. And this features five fuse circuits, a 12 volt power outlet, a voltmeter, and also a pair of 3.0 USB ports, which are 18 watts. You have a space up here on the top, a little indentation, where they provide you with a legend sheet so that you know which switch goes to what. And the hardware package includes mounting screws and the legends for the switch identification. For cutting out something like this, I instinctively grab my drill, you know, to drill a hole or four holes. And then I was going to use my jigsaw, cut this out. And... I really hate the fact that, you know, the jigsaw blows sawdust all over the place. And um, wasn't real keen on that. But I remembered I have another tool that I'd like to use. And uh, it just kind of keeps the mess, you know, to an absolute minimum. I've had really good luck with this oscillating tool. And it just uses vibration, you know, to oscillate this blade back and forth. And it's real fine sawdust, and I'm hoping it just 
fall straight down onto the floor instead of blowing all over the place. Looks like the whole cup pretty clean and um, and it also looks like the sawdust is kept to a very minimal amount down on the floor. So that worked out pretty good. Okay, I'm going to try to fit this in one-handed. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. Okay, not going to work, so I'm going to have to use two hands. I'm going to set the camera down, and I'll be back with you in just a second. Okay, that's a little better. And the switch panel fits in there perfect. I'll just screw that into place, and then I can start hooking things up on the back side. What I like about these oscillating saws is that you can take that blade out, and you can change positions with it. Very simple to just move to another location. You just press that uh, little thumb piece down right there, pull the blade out, switch it to um, you know a, a straight cut or side, whatever you want to do. I love this thing. I just keep forgetting that I have it. And the finished product. I think that's going to be a good location for it. And it uh, fits up here perfectly. It's at a height that I can easily reach it. And accessible from the side door or from inside. Here's the front of the switch panel. You go around to the back. And yeah, it looks like a little bit of a rat's nest. But... Everything is here for a reason. Obviously, you it's nice to have each of your circuits fused individually. There is a separate powering ground lead that feeds this. So I decided to run a, a heavy 12-gauge wire up through to feed this. There isn't going to be anything that's going to be a big draw. I have you know some LED lights, I think four of them on one circuit. And nothing's going to be on at the same time. Um, probably the switch for the water pump when I get that installed. But like I said, nothing that's a big draw and nothing um, that's going to be on or all of the switches on at the same time. I did run the 12 gauge wiring through the uh, three quarter inch conduit along the back and over into my solar system. I use a three quarter inch just like I did in my garage area under the bed so that I can run extra wires up through because at this point probably anything else is just going to need to be um, run to the uh, you know the positive side here and I'll have them grounded elsewhere. It is nice though to have a separate voltmeter up here up front and it is nice now to finally be able to turn on my lights. I've had them wired in since I did the ceiling. I just haven't had them hooked to any power. So it's nice to be able to turn them on. And to finish off my install, I'll do my usual. I'll print up a couple labels. And then I will attach those at points along the way. So that I can identify which wire goes to what. The peel and stick labels, I can print in one line which would be a lot larger type style, or I can print in two lines, and uh, that just keeps the uh, label a little bit shorter. But as long as I can read it, that's all I need it to do. As I wrap up this week's video, as you can see, there are a lot of little odds and ends, and I apologize if I repeated some stuff, because I do shoot video clips at different times, and I could be in... <laughs> The process of working on one thing and then switch to something else and then go back to that and then I forget what I've already talked about so I apologize for that but the cabinets are coming along quite well other than trim and putting some doors on um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with my refrigerator yet if I'm going to put it on sliders and keep it underneath the bed it's just strapped in right now so it doesn't um, slide all over the floor and bang into things the intended purpose, of course, was to go here, which I may end up, um, you know, putting it on sliders back in that position. But I can also see that as being a a, a large, large storage space. Um, the other thing was, this was another major thing that I wanted to get accomplished, and I'm glad I got done. 
was this cabinet and as you can see I've got two shelves put in there and I'm probably going to put in two or three more and uh, the other thing was the installation of this switch panel that was a big help it's just so nice to be able to walk in here and hit a, a switch you know just the simple things and make things actually light up and work but um, again that was uh, a very nice gift um, from my son and his girlfriend and I just wanted to say thank you to everybody for all of your support for all of your comments and um, just want to say that if you're not a subscriber please consider subscribing I do have more to to go on this build and I thank you all for watching.